So today, I'm going to have a closer look uh, at one of the basic concepts of uh, our project, namely the prevention pyramid. Why do we use this model um, as a basis, as a framework for developing innovative methods to tackle the risks of violent extremism? What are the strengths and the pitfalls, the pros and cons of this model? This is the focus of our webinar. And we also invite an external expert, but more on the program later on. Before we start, I just want to focus quite quickly on the Orpheus project itself. So Orpheus stands for Offline and Online Radicalization Prevention, Holding Back Extremism and Upholding Security. Uh, the project wants to tackle the factors that increase the risk of violent extremism in democratic societies, regardless of ideological background. The project started in early 2019 and will end in the winter of 2022 or spring 2023, depending on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The countries involved, uh, like I just said, are uh, Belgium, the UK, the Netherlands and France. Uh, the project is partly funded by Interreg, a European fund to promote cohesion between European Union countries and for this specific funding on social innovation. The partners. So we are eight partners collaborating cross-borderly, three from Belgium, two from the UK, two from the Netherlands and one from France. There are two local governments involved, namely the city of Mechelen and the Portsmouth City Council. There are also two social services involved, Greta Grand Littoral, from France and Contour de Twerm in the Netherlands. And four knowledge partners, where the NGO CPIRE is both working in the field and developing expertise in depolarization. The institutions for higher education and research are the University of Portsmouth, Achterville, the University of Applied Sciences, and the University College Roosevelt. Orpheus has three main objectives objectives to realize. We will provide offline safe spaces for vulnerable young people to express their grievances, online safety for young people to protect them from online grooming, guidance and policy recommendations of an integrated prevention method. Well, this may seem quite straightforward. However, trying to develop a project to develop trainings, tools, and insights into the preventions of the risks of violent extremism is not easy. For the time being, we identified seven challenges where we already can add an eighth one, namely, of course, the pandemic <coughs> and what the effect is, of, uh, is uh, on the project, of course, but also on young people and professionals. We will discuss these challenges more in detail in future publications. Sorry, uh, but today we will focus, uh, like I just said, on the prevention. Uh, what kind of prevention do we envision? Okay, Bart, maybe next slide. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I go back a little in time. So in the beginning of this year, in uh, February 2020, I presented the Orpheus project at the uh, uh, working group on radicalization at the VVSG. VVSG is an uh, umbrella organization of Flemish cities and municipalities, um, and they have yeah, a working group on radicalization. So I presented the uh, project there, and there was a very intriguing and important question uh, from one of the members of the group, and uh, she asked, uh, does it make sense to situate well-being prevention uh, under prevention of uh, uh, some aspects of the social, of society that we want to prevent? Uh? Isn't this narrowing social policy down to prevention and thus making it functional for prevention, while it also has many other objectives? She thought that this places too much emphasis on the safety aspect uh, of uh, social prevention, of social policy. So uh, we took, took up this challenge yeah, and uh, Bart, and Bart van Boeghouten and De Noir Kerger uh, formulated an answer. And this was really the start, the beginning 
of the idea to organize this webinar. We will first go into uh, the prevention pyramid model. Uh, what is it? Uh, what is the place of the uh, in it? Uh, what, is it name? what is the place of the prevention model in the Orpheus project? Uh, Bert van Buchhouder, lecturer at the Achtervelde University of Applied Sciences, will take this up. Then next, his colleague Denois Kercher uh, will take up the question raised at the working group uh, and focus on the pros and cons of the prevention pyramid. Afterwards, uh, there will be a short break. Uh, and after the break, Peter Koller, who is a prevention officer at the city of Ghent, uh, he will reflect on the use of the model in real life, you could say. Um, afterwards, there will be room for questions and comments. OK, but before uh, we start, some rules or some advice, really. Um, I would like to ask you all to mute your microphones during the presentation, to switch off your camera, uh, to have no verbal interventions during the presentations, but however, you can use the chat function. And if you have a question for a specific presenter, uh, include their name uh, in your chat message so uh, we know who you are directing to. And after the presentation, uh, I will give uh, a summary of the chats um messages uh maybe come back to you if there's some clarification needed and uh, afterwards there's time for questions and an open discussion okay so that's for all for me now i give now the floor to uh, Bart van Buchhouten, who will enlighten on enlighten us on the pyramid model Bart. hello good morning good morning hilde good morning to you all um, so I just want to uh, clarify the present the, the pyramid model and afterwards my colleague possibly of the first of all we have to start uh, from the idea why do we um, um, use such a model it has to do with the fact that uh, like all uh, interreg projects. Uh, this Orpheus project is an, a social innovation project, which means that we want to um, find new ways, solutions for problems in, exist, in existing policies and services and the way our society deals with uh, certain uh, aspects. In this case, one of we, we had five, six main challenges and one of the challenges was uh, in the mainstream prevention, there is uh, in many uh, in many cases, a focus on early detection of individuals at risk. And when you look at the whole um, radicalization prevention um, history, you, you, you can see this very, uh, very, you could say, narrow focus. And the challenge this, this has, this, this brings with it two uh, main challenges. The one, the, the first is that it neglects, it, it risks to neglect the uh, the social prevention in communities. And the second one is that it uh, can unfairly target individual individuals and groups. And uh, to try to uh, answer this uh, challenge, we um, were in search of an integrated prevention model. And we found this in the pyramid model of uh, a Flemish uh, researcher, uh, de Klerk. Uh, who developed it, in fact, in the context of aggression on, in schools. Uh, so for us, it was an integrated uh, model for developing, analyzing, evaluating uh, prevention uh, measures as a combination of more general and more specific uh, measures. Uh, the prevention model, I will I, I just sh show it uh, the, the, the pyramid model to you and, and I will explain it uh, more in depth. Uh, you see it's a pyramid and it's based upon the societal context. This is a first important uh, thing. The societal context is not part of the prevention pyramid, of course, but it stresses the importance of this societal context. Uh, the metaphor suggests that all prevention work starts from the ground level 
of the broader societal context, specific prevention practices are considered as part of improving the quality of social life of citizens, citizens in uh, democratic societies. Or to put it the other way around, uh, prevention policies and practices should not disrupt or deteriorate this quality of social life in democratic societies. Prevention work should have a special and uh, critical attention to the general living conditions in society. This is a, a real, a real, a really important part of this uh, pyramid uh, that often uh, tends to be forgotten. So, when we look more closely to this model, uh, then uh, the first thing to stress it is that it is not a phased or tiered approach of prevention. So it does not involve the idea of a cascading sequence of prevention efforts. On the contrary, the model starts from the idea that you analyze a problem and then you uh, take appropriate actions on different level uh, with special attention to avoid counterproductive effects um, of some more uh, problem-oriented higher in the pyramid uh, measures of, uh, um, of prevention. Um, the model uh, makes also a clear distinction between problem-oriented and well-being-oriented approach and also between types. You, you see the lower levels are really pro, the proactive part of uh, the, uh, the proactive part, fundamental prevention is the proactive part of uh, prevention. You have then the, the the preventive part uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, to the, the third level upwards and then uh, you have what is in fact considered uh, the reactive part of uh, uh, prevention which is direct intervention and curation. Um, um, the whole pyramid rests upon the ground level of the societal context which I explained and uh, there are five levels of prevention. So I will explain very briefly these uh, five uh, levels. Uh, the first level is the level of the fundamental prevention. It's uh, about improving general quality of life. That's the focus. It's in the indirect prevention and both analysis and approach are well-being oriented. So it's not a problem uh, oriented or pro uh, starting from a problem uh, analysis in, in, in for specific problems. Uh, examples of uh, fundamental uh, prevention are community-based policing, high quality and accessibility of services, education, um, high standards of um, work, high accessibility to uh, labor uh, and so forth. Um, the second level is the level of general uh, prevention where the focus lies on the risk, uh, preventing risks by approaching the problem uh, broad and positive. So um, in our case, the problem of uh, violent extremism in society is uh, acknowledged, but uh, the prevention approach is well-being oriented at that level. The aim of the positive approach is to avoid in fact, that groups are stigmatized with more social frustration and self-stigmatization as a counterproductive effect. Um, some examples uh, of that uh, level are uh, support legitimate uh, or non-violent channels for expressing grievances, training educators in their uh, pedagogical role of um, um, to deal of dealing with uh, difficult conversations uh, on controversial issues. Um, organizing safe spaces where young people can meet uh, in a non-repressive way and having these conversations with each other, uh, improve the quality of uh, public space in a certain neighborhood and so forth. Um, specific uh, prevention then, um, there the focus uh, lies on the reducing the risk by responding directly to risk factors. So the idea there is uh, that prevention measures are directly targeted um, on a specific problem. The, so both the analysis and the approach are problem oriented. So if, from here on, you, you can speak of direct prevention approach. The problem uh, of uh, violent extremism is a knowledge the, uh, the, the possible uh, 
risk factors of this violent extremism are directly approached uh, are specific, specifically uh, targeted to counteract uh, these specific uh, risk factors. For example, uh, uh, action against hate speech, resilience training with groups at risk, individual trajectories to reduce uh, social alienation, a protocol of cooperation between services and uh, so forth. Um, then uh, the fourth level is the level of the direct intervention where um, the prevention um, effort wants to prevent escalation and damage. The risk for um, Bart, we can't hear you anymore. There was your freezing. Uh, violent, different, and uh, oh. So can you start one, two minutes back? Two minutes back. Yeah, something. One minute. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have. Um, is it okay, Hilde? Now it's perfect. Yes. Yeah, maybe it's had something to do with the Wi-Fi. Uh, I will uh, maybe I return to the 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 slide before this slide, Hilde. No, 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 just this one. Yeah, direct okay. interventions. Okay, yeah. okay. So direct intervention. Ah. Oh. No. or violent extremism so, to so, happen in society. Sorry, sorry, Bach, but it, it's again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe you can yeah. carry on. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can carry on without uh, the camera. I yeah, will do that. Um, uh, that's the only thing I can do. I hope I hope for the best. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so direct intervention. The risk for uh, violent extremism is uh, clear and present and the aim is to prevent um, further escalation. And then different intervention techniques are used like uh, uh, online uh, um, interventions to disturb um, recruiting networks or real life interventions to disturb these networks, individual trajectory, trajectories with a person and so forth. And then the fifth and the last, uh, the, the, the highest level, the last level of this uh, prevention pyramid is uh, curation or mitigation re rehabilitation. Uh, to restrict some uh, negative uh, effects. So that means that uh, the problem, violent extremism, the, uh, the um, aggression has already uh, occurred. The effects of the problem uh, have to be curated. Uh, the analysis uh, and uh, approach is problem oriented, uh, also in this uh, uh, level of prevention. The goals of curation are to prevent the problem or the situation of becoming worse and to have a quick effective effective answer to the negative effects it's uh, that means um, um, for example exit programs for convicted terrorists um, dismantling supporting networks activities for healing and restoring the social cohesion in uh, a community in a city and uh, so forth um so this is the whole uh, idea of this uh, prevention pyramid. You see in this uh, scheme uh, that um, the yellow boxes, that these are our work packages, work package one on organizing safe space and work, work package two on online prevention uh, of violent uh, extremism. And we try to map, uh, to uh, organize our prevention efforts around this prevention pyramid uh, thinking on uh, uh, on which level we are working what is the target how do we address the problem of uh, violent extremism trying also uh, to be active on the lower levels of the prevention pyramid which is uh, important in our opinion just because the challenge that we saw in the beginning of uh, the story that uh, a lot of uh, prevention efforts are in fact direct direct intervention and are in fact more reactive than proactive or, re of, or preventive. Um, I guess that is the most important 
uh, stuff I wanted to tell you. Uh, so I go back, I give the floor to uh, Hilde. Thank you, Bart. Uh, I think this presentation makes quite clear um, where activities, prevention activities can be situated. So uh, it is very, uh, can be very helpful, but of course there are, uh, as for each model really, pros and cons uh, to the pyramid model. Dunma Kerger will enlighten us on this. Dunma. Good morning. Um, we are very clockwise. Um, so following the Orpheus presentation at the VVSG radicalization working group, uh, Hilde got a question, a difficult question. A difficult question was raised about the use and interpretation of the prevention pyramid, which is the basis of our prevention model we use in the project. The question is uh, on the PowerPoint. Does it make sense to situate well-being prevention under prevention? Isn't this narrowing social policy down to prevention? So we took up the challenge. The question about the prevention pyramid is was particularly interesting. And the answer uh, must be nuanced. Uh, we must stress the complex, the complexity of the use of the metaphor or the model. So the answer was on one hand, we can argue in favor of the model. The idea of the prevention model is indeed that good prevention means that one also or especially takes measures that are not primarily problem oriented, but can have effects on the problems. Specific interventions aimed at young people who have or cause problems without taking care of the underlying levels are of little use. An example from a study visit to Manchester in 2006 to several years we went to Manchester, uh, youth centers and youth workers used to work in different districts. Due to budget cuts from local authorities, these projects disappeared. The focus shifted to from uh, coping with youth causing nuisance or antisocial behavior in neighborhoods where it was common. Intensive youth work projects were installed by prevention workers in close correlation with police during several weeks afterwards. This was abolished and the project moved on, moved on to other problem areas. To no surprise, the nuisance came back. Conclusion was the foundation of good youth work as a basic provision for all children and young people is needed. When there are no problems, but certainly when there are problems, such as nuisance, youth work has a direct effect on young people's lives and indirectly on problems that young people have or cause. In such youth works, if such youth works exists and works well, it is still possible that a specific problem oriented intervention is needed and requested, but good youth work will have prevented many problems and problem oriented or interventions will be embedded in a broader positive approach to young people. There will be a relation, an existing relation. And in a way, this is classic old school insight of the meaning of youth work. But we think it's important nowadays to bring this line of thought to the attention again in times of strong, sometimes exclusively problem oriented control and instrumentalization of social of youth work. After all, this ground layer of trust and relations was in peril of disappearing in various youth, youth work activities and only problem oriented legitimations were possible, such as access to labor market, prevention of drug abuse, reduction of nuisance, and recently the risk of radicalization and social alienation. So this is in favor of the model, stressing the, the basic layer. On the other hand, the model indeed entails considerable risks, and this might be the question from the VVSG. If one is steering the pyramid in a manner of speaking top down, in this case, 
from a safety or securitarian perspective aimed at early detection and manage, managing risks, then these broad welfare oriented integrations will either be referred to the second plan or could eventually be eliminated due to urgency and scarcity. In this way, we agree with the suggestion of uh, the VDSK working group. Prevention might be transformed into an instrument of that safety and risk management policy. Youth workers and organizations may feel obliged or obligated to surprise to this policy, to the political and public pressure because due to confidence with local policymakers and shifts in funding, this is sometimes the only way organizations can survive. Even in tempore non suspecto, in the 90s, with no reference to radicalization, some academics warned and questioned these mechanisms. The Flemish welfare uh, experts Dirk Heldhoff wrote a, classical, a classic article in Alert, uh, Flemish Journal for Social Policy, on the problems and the contraproductive effects of welfare work placed at the service of safety goals. The subject then was about nuisance and disturbing youth in the neighborhoods, the streets, and the reactions were uh, VIP, we call it very irritating policing, neighborhood watches, problem orient oriented policing, and Geldof made a plea, argued for a strict separation between welfare work, community work, and policing. Good community work in areas would have a positive effect on safety anyway. Despite the clear statement and analysis at that time, the instrumentalization, partly fueled by the breakthrough of new public management in our local authorities, has continued, even in the management of local youth welfare work. In short, this means that at its best, youth welfare work risks becoming a sort of servant for local social policy agendas. But in times of fear and terror, many other assignments are now being bestowed that are actually at odds with the basic principles of youth work. The contested participations of the LEVC plus, we call it the local uh, security council, for example, with the diagnosis of uh, and policy responses to the threat of homegrown terrorism, that risk has only increased in a climate of securization. One observes, for example, that if youth work would only make sense to the extent that it would give signals about and help provide guidance to radicals, radicalized people. A recent article by the Dutch expert Martijn de Koning shows that the questions Geldof discussed more than 20 years ago are more than ever topical. During the 90s, the subject was nuisance and perceived insecurity in neighborhoods, whereas now the focus on risk and safety in a radicalization approach is pointed at national security. Muslims and by extension foreign, foreigners are targeted. The image of safety itself has been radicalized. Prevention and attempts to manage risk have led to an extension of powers of local authorities with the classical rules of the within the classical rules of the government. Safety becomes dominant at the expense of other assignments of the state. This is described in literature as securization. This is reflected in the increasing surveillance of certain easily identifiable group, the outsiders. And this surveillance works in two directions. On the one hand, there is surveillance, prevention and care and they are used for young people who are at risk of radicalization. On the other hand, surveillance, disruption and repression are used for on young people who are seen as responsible for that risk. So the classical role of youth work is also changing in this context. Surveillance is the biggest common denominator of expectation of youth work, youth welfare work and more broadly for all social actors. And this is manifest in the imperatives surrounding the LEVCs, the obligation to report and the erosion of, let's say, professional secrecy and confidentiality in recent Belgian and Flemish legislation. We also found inspiration for this discussion 
on the role of youth work in the prevention in a document by Sikkerlink and Gielen from the RAN network, where they uh, make the point the potential of youth work is tackling the risk factors that can create a breeding ground for radicalization. And there are a multitudes of risk factors which provide at best guidance, but by no means can they provide guidelines for protection policy or positive action. Moreover, scientific literature points at the perverse and even counter contraproductive effects of such actions, which we have already discussed at length in the initial phase of our Orpheus project. In describing the current situation, Sigling also distinguishes two approaches, a deficit based approach. And he's a champion of the strength based approach. This was as and is still the strength of and foundation of good youth work. Assignments in the field of surveillance reporting are very far from the DNA of youth work. This was our answer to the task force of the VVSG. I'll uh, give the floor back to Hilde. Maybe short conclusion. If we look back at the answer, we see two aspects. The pyramid can be used bottom up or top down. We have our doubts or uh, challenge the top down use of the model. The second uh, discussion might be well-being oriented versus securization. And the global conclusion is we need a critical view on the risk of, let's say, chain approaches, integral prevention, uh, the blurring of the different levels and the uh, use of the pyramid. Hilde, you have the floor. Thank you. So. We went quite quickly through the, our slides and our presentations. Normally we had a, a short break. I don't know, we just half an hour further, so maybe we shouldn't have a short break uh, and have first have a, a listen to um, the reaction of Peter Kolle. Uh, Peter, is that okay with Peter? Uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I open, you can see me, but it's better to switch off the camera uh, for, the for the transmission of everything, I think. I think so too. So, yes, yeah. wait, I'll wait. work. I'm just going to present you uh, for the, uh, our listeners. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting me for giving some reflections and insights and participating on this webinar. Uh, I do this from my own experience 20 years by the city of Ghent. I'm a civil servant, an officer working on prevention. I'm not the great prevention officer, but I have a lot of experience by my task of 20 years evaluating prevention actions in Ghent. And evaluating means also two things, learning about what has happened and two, creating new actions. In that perspective, I had the chance to co-create with other people in 2015, the local actions on prevention of radicalization in Ghent. So I have some experience to bring in. And I will, uh, eagerly reflect on the pyramid to uh, how untangle the discussion I think I said it. yeah you can simply show I will uh, give my reflections by that uh, by that picture all right first we we personally in the 20 years we never worked with that kind of vision of pyramid prevention we have a far more dynamic, interactional way of uh, working, preventive actions, creating projects. This means following the, the explanations of Bart and Denois. This means that we see three levels, the societal context, fundamental prevention and general prevents as one level and we never should name it prevention. 
we, we start always, but it, it's implicitly, it is in the comment of the noir. We always start by evaluating, appreciating, acknowledging the, the main goals of those, of those levels, those sectors, the quality of life, it means education, it means healthcare, it means also community, uh, community, good community relations, inclusive society. You should uh, start and, and hold this as a main, that's the way we work, eh? as a main goal. This doesn't mean, and this is, I think this is an important task for the discussion and for the development of your project, uh, which I appreciate, that you give prevention even in those general, even in that level, a good place. And that is not becoming by naming it like in the pyramid, fundamental and general prevention. Surely you have to embed the prevention in it and you can see it. And that's the way we always see it. We see it interactional, interactional between the safe and the social. I mean, if you are in a classroom, in a school, I mean, if it's a complete disorder, you can't do your work like as a teacher very good. Otherwise, if your class, eh, it, it functions very good, you may have between brackets a preventive, uh, in the long run, a preventive effect. This means when we come in, when we come in, and that's my experience, and that's, that's my function, eh? when we come in, in schooling, education, youth work, or even in neighborhoods and in conflicts, we always come in by a problem, problem oriented. So the thing, well, well being oriented, that's not what we do. We always come problem oriented, but the owners of the problem are the people who are working on that level on the levels here named fundamental and general prevention. So we can help them to create a context where they can attend their own goals. That's the way I see a form of prevention embedded. Maybe it's the same that it's meant by safe spaces in your working project, working plan, maybe that, and that's also how I see it. It's a social and a, a physical place context you create so that the fundamental, no, not fundamental, so that the, the sectors, the domains can uh, attend their own goals. As we turn the thing around, this is one thing I want to say. And prevention here, prevention here comes in as a leverage action. I don't know, leverage, I hope it's a good translation it's very pinpointed, very pinpointed to create a good context so that uh, we can acknowledge the expertise of the people, like the teachers, like the youth workers. We can appreciate the problems they live with. And that's, that what I, that's what I sometimes miss uh, in the explanation and the reflections of Bart and Denois. The problems of the youth, of the problems of, of uh, citizens in an, of neighborhoods, eh, of problems of neighborhoods, are also concerning uh, criminality. I mean, uh, victimized, being victimized or victimizing others. That's an, also a part of the problem. And you have to recognize that and learning and taking that seriously. And then you can work as a prevention to, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know uh, the good word for it, to mediate to restore the things. That's one, that's one insight. The way we work, we come in, it's surely that we, we use methods, social methods, um, under the, from within prevention, but we give it a specific place between in the levels, in the bottom levels. So we can stimulate the bottom levels to function better. That's one thing. Then you have uh, three, four, five. Um, we, the problem I have with, with the picture is from, you have to place prevention uh, in interaction, in a dynamic, in an interaction between, and I didn't hear it, prevention, repression, and curation. We call it a three ways, a three ways policy. 
and we always search for a good balance between those three ways. I mean, working preventive, working repressive, and working curative. You have to be aware, and that's also the main thing, we, we focus always on this problem-oriented specific prevention balance between those three ways. I could, uh, I don't have the time by giving uh, examples, but uh, it's important that it is equal. Every way has its own value. Every way, it should be uh, a balanced equilibrium. And important, you should evaluate constantly the effects from one way to another. That's and name it. Because often we start very, uh, I see here work project, I name online. We often start very, very enthusiastic on a preventive way and we end in the repressive or vice versa. That's, you should constantly, and that is an integrated, uh, make open over those uh, balances. Peter, are you still there? There's no more sound. Peter? Ah, yeah, I ben gedempt. Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, someone want to say something or? No, 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 thank you. Um, no, I just saw one more slide. Um, I think there's one more slide. Uh, uh, yes, yes. And then uh, what I recognize, if what, what's specific on uh, the actions that uh, we do, and especially when it concerns uh, the difficult uh, uh, problems uh, around radicalization, but also on, on drugs and on uh, violence, is that we choose for an, uh, uh, a way of working, of actions, elaborating actions that the Noir mentioned from Siebelink, we work always strength-based and life-world oriented. Mm -hmm. I can give examples maybe in the discussion how we, we do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Be yes, because that's the way you can all you start from the bottom and that's uh, with, with the vulnerable people, the young people. And that's the way to make also possible in the end, in the end, structural, structural changes of their their life and in their lives. I'm, I'm very abstract, but uh, maybe if discussion goes on and becomes specific uh, cases on uh, safe spaces or online, I can uh, continue. So I have three, uh, I would simplify the whole model and make a circle of it. But that's my uh, way of thinking. Maybe Bart, you can show the circle. I think it's in the presentation. A few slides further. Yeah, that's, uh, this is a circle we made for street corner work. What, what is really strength based and life world oriented uh, way of working of case management. But uh, that's maybe a way you can, the people who all participate can work on uh, giving prevention a specific place in the actions. That's uh, okay. my contribution, yeah. Thank you very much, because it's, uh, I think, quite a fundamental, I think, critique uh, on the prevention pyramid. Uh, I don't know if Bart or Denoir want to have a first reaction or a clarification. Thank you, Peter, for uh, bringing in these uh, uh, ideas. Um, I appreciate it. We, in in my answer, I uh, went back to old school youth work and the traditional uh, stance of youth work. And you brought something or uh, something else in the experiences from street corner work, which is. Uh, rather interesting you also stressed the strength based approach um and this is uh, common we we share that view 
Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe, oh, sorry. Yeah. Go go ahead, Hilda. Okay, go okay. yeah. Okay. Some other, uh, another ID, but I, I just yeah, lost yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There was maybe one remark uh, in the chat function that's connected to it. Uh, it it's also has to do with, with prevention on the lower level. And is it prevention at a societal uh, background? So maybe, uh, Lise Barenser, maybe you can clarify on this. Why do you think it is a problem that uh, the pyramid is a slightly different from the original one of the cleric? I don't see it as a problem. Uh, that's not uh, what I wanted to say. It just uh, surprised me that you uh, that what is level four uh, with Johan the cleric, you, you uh, made it in two levels, direct intervention and curation, mitigation or re rehabilitation. Um, and with Johan is just one uh, level, and I was just wondering why. Okay, Bart Ordonoa. This is one for Bart, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Seems we have lost Bart. Yes, we have lost Bart. No, no, I have. Uh, oh. Hello. Yes, hello. But I have uh, yeah, had prob problems to the mic. No, I guess that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, because I made. Yes, we, we don't hear you very well, so you're you're on and off. Uh, maybe you can switch off your camera. It's not so nice, but it's. Uh... Yeah, it's OK. Is it is it OK? Yes, now it's okay. Um, so I'm not sure if it is a further elaboration on the work of the of the clerk in 2011 because it was I made this together with my colleague uh, Rehan uh, Gurgus. Um, anyway, we what we wanted to stress that uh, is the is the difference between uh, problems escalating. If you are in a, in, a, in an escalating period and otherwise uh, rehabilitation or curation when when it when it has occurred. Eh? For example, when there has been uh, when there has been uh, actions, very violent uh, extremist actions in the neighborhood, and it uh, has disrupted the neighborhood. Then you uh, the, the the example I gave uh, restoring cohesion and uh, and uh, do some restorative work. Uh, that's that's the reason we um, we separate it. If not, I'm not sure if uh, the clerk did not separate it it's, uh, in in the later versions of the pyramid. But I'm not sure of that. I, I should have to look uh, back uh, on the our literature. Okay, Lise, is this uh, clear for you? Is this enough? Yes, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I would add one thing that just uh, slipped my mind uh, two minutes ago. Uh, an important issue or an interesting issue Peter brought in was the life world perspective. Mm -hmm. and when you use uh, pyramids and uh, fill it in, we get in a system logic. And I think this is very important uh, the way Peter explained it to bring in the Happen uh, uh, uh distinction of life worlds of uh, people living in neighborhoods, in our cases, uh, young people and so on. This is something uh, fresh in our. Uh, it has been uh, in our discussions, but uh, it was explicit in uh, Peter's explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay. In another now, the the prevention pyramid is one part of our. Um, of our uh, basic concepts, let's say, in Orpheus. Uh, another part is very much about uh, young uh, people, not so much seen as criminals or victims, but as actors and mm -hmm. uh, stressing the actorship of uh, young people. And uh, this refers to what Peter says about, of said, I guess, about um, uh, life world and when prevention when prevention comes in the the, the, the ultimate idea is that it it can um, help young people or people in a neighborhood to cope with things and to move further on eh? and uh, that they are not seen simply as uh, objects of uh, prevention but also as uh, in the first place as actors um, so just wanted to add this point. 